Hey, Barkley Brookers. All right, this story comes to us from Mongolia, which is a country in Asia over, if you think about where China is, it's over there. Uh, landlocked country, countries all around it. Um, so this is a Mongolian folktale, and it is called The Khan's Daughter. The author of this story, this retelling, is Lawrence Yep. A long time ago, there was a poor man who told his son, Monkey, that he would become rich someday and marry the Khan's daughter. When his father died, Monkey spent many long, lonely years tending sheep while he awaited for his father's words to come true. Finally, he said to himself, if I stay here any longer, I will surely make my father into a liar, for the Khan's daughter knows no more of my father's prophecy than she knows of me. Perhaps I better seek her out. And so he drove in his master's flock. He put on his coat of red, and he set out to seek his bride. On foot, he crossed the vast grassy plains that stretched like a great green sea. On and on he walked beneath the bright blue sky of Tengri, the ruler of all things, until he reached the city of the calm. There he is, that's Monke. It's all his things tied onto a stick that he's carrying over his shoulder. There. That's what that is. Domed tents spread all the way to the horizon like so many buttons sewed onto a giant sheet of brown felt. From their tops rose smoke like threads of cotton waving in the wind. And with the horses were tethered haughty camels and oxen and even big hairy yaks. Everywhere, soldiers and citizens hurried to get ready, for the Khan's great enemy was preparing to invade. Monke tried not to stare, but he had never seen so many people in his life. So the enemy's army, the soldiers are coming and they're getting ready. Remembering his father's prophecy, Monke marched straight to the great domed tent at the very center. I am Monke and it is my destiny to marry the Khan's daughter. Inside, the Khan's wife and daughter had been seen, ser had been serving the Khan and his captains, and when she heard Monke's claim, the Khan's wife straightened in outrage. How dare that dog presume such a thing? And she would have ordered the guard to execute Monke right away. However, the Khan's daughter, Forte, laughed and reminded her mother, if a Khan may marry a commoner's daughter, a commoner may marry a Khan's daughter, for Borte's mother had been a commoner before the Khan had married her. And then the Khan turned to his captains. Let us amuse ourselves with this bumpkin before we go to planning the war. And though she was still outraged, the Khan's wife smiled back at her husband. Only if you will allow me to set three tests for him. When the Khan agreed, Borte and her mother withdrew behind a rug hung up like a wall. There's the Khan and the mother and the daughter. Monkey felt shabby in his red coat when he knelt before the Khan, who wore gold silk and held a jeweled sword. Behind him sat a fierce falcon, and seated all around him were his mighty captains. Even so, Borte thought he might have possibilities. However, before she could say anything, her mother whispered to the Khan, Our daughter's husband must be strong. In the mountains there are seven demons. Let him fetch back their wealth. The Khan and Borte believed it a harsh task, but the Khan told Monke to return with the demon's treasure. Monke was afraid, but he had caught sight of the Khan's daughter, and he would have agreed to anything. Just point the way, he said. So there she is now from behind and there's the con and there's Monke. because she felt sorry for him the con's daughter baked Monke seven loaves with sesame seeds and seven without but when borte wasn't looking her mother poisoned the sesame loaves and presented them herself to Monke. eat the seven loaves with the sesame seeds on the way there and the seven plain loaves on the way back the bread would make an end to Monke even before the seven demons could.
And so Monkey rode across the plain and into the mountains on the little horse the Khan had given him. Carefully, he picked his way through the dense forest until he reached the steep, lifeless rocks as sharp as knife blades. The further he rode among the barren crags, the more he wondered about the wisdom of the quest. So, since food always seemed to cheer him up, he sat down to eat. But since he hated getting the sesame seeds stuck in his teeth, he ate the plain loaves first. By then, the seven demons had caught wind of him. Sweeping out of their cave, they roared, Who dares invade our home? Terrified, Monke abandoned his pouch and galloped away. However, the demons paused when they reached his pouch. Peeking inside, they found the sesame loaves. One for each of us, they claimed in delight. How thoughtful of the main course to provide us an appetizer, too. But the instant they devoured the poisoned bread, they dropped dead. In the meantime, though, Monke had stopped in shame. What will the Khan's daughter think of a coward? And so he rode back. And there they are, all the seven demons. When he found the demons slain, Monke hauled the treasure back to the Khan. But the Khan's scouts had brought word that the enemy was invading, and the Khan himself was already donning his armor when Monke tumbled the demon's treasure at his feet. There were bushels of gold and pearls from China, jade from Khotan, even fire orbs from far India, for the demons had looted many caravans. However, before the Khan or Borte could speak, the Khan's wife said, Our daughter's husband must not only be strong, but he must be brave. Let him drive the enemy from our land. And though he was even more afraid this time, Monke sighed. <sighs> Just point the way. There's all the treasure coming down here out of the treasure chest. And there's the beautiful Khan's daughter and the Khan and Borte. So the Khan gave some horsemen to Monke to lead in advance of the Khan's own army. And Monke led his little band across the plains until they reached a wooded hill where they decided to rest. Suddenly, the ground shook beneath them and a scout galloped back. Our enemies are coming and there are thousands of them. Monke nervously climbed onto his horse. A dozen or a thousand will drive them away like sheep. However, his men grumbled. He knows more about hurting than fighting. If we follow this shepherd, we will surely die. So there's the scout coming back to warn them, and here's the invading army over there. And there is Monke. So while his men retreated, Monke galloped forward, straight into a young sapling. He became so entangled with its branches that he uprooted the entire tree in his mad dash. When the enemy saw the green-haired warrior plunge out of the woods, they stared. One, five, I can't count all of his arms, one soldier said. Their Khan shook with fear. It must be one of the seven demons. And in a panic, they fled, leaving their pack animals behind. Monke returned, leading the long train of animals loaded down with the spoils. The Khan was amazed to see him, for Monke's own men had reported that he had died. Then the Khan and the people could not praise Monke enough, and even the Khan's wife had to admit that he had proved himself worthy. But Borte erupted the celebration. He has met your conditions, but not mine. This time, Monke was quite full of himself. I have vanquished demons and armies. There is nothing I fear. And yet, Borte said, there is always someone stronger and braver and smarter. For your third task, you must conquer Bagator the clever and mighty. Just point the way, Monke boasted. And the next day, he set out.
As Monke rode along across the plain, he saw a column of dust. Squinting, he saw a horse, and upon the horse was a rider clad all in black with a scarf hiding the rider's face. Who are you? Monke demanded. I am Bagator, the rider announced in a gruff voice. Surrender! Desperately, Monke loosed an arrow, but it fell wide of its mark. And then Bagator sent an arrow whistling past Monke's ear. I shot to miss, Bagator called. Next time I won't. Terrified, Monke tumbled from his saddle and knelt upon the dirt. The Khan's daughter tried to warn me, but I wouldn't listen. I have met my match, my Bagator. Take my horse and my armor and weapons, but please spare me. With a laugh, Bagator took everything and rode away. As he stood in rags, Monke told himself, you were a fool not to heed the Khan's daughter. He would have gone home, but he wanted to catch one last sight of the Khan's daughter. One final look will be worth the shame and humiliation, he said, and he set out. After a few miles, Monke saw Borte sitting in the middle of the plain. Have you met Bagator yet? She called to him. Wanting to impress her, Monke bragged, I beat Bagator so badly that I felt sorry for him so I gave him my arms as well as my horse. Borte drew a scarf over her mouth and warned in Bagator's gruff voice, Speak the truth or face my wrath once again. Red-faced, Monke understood that Bagator had been the Khan's daughter in disguise. You won and I lost. Borte dropped the scarf and smiled. More than a hero, I want a prudent husband who won't get himself killed at the first opportunity. I will always listen to you, Monke swore. Just point the way. Then, Borte announced, you have passed the final test. We will tell no one the truth about your fight with Bagator. Not even your mother, Monke asked. Especially my mother, Borte said. Then Borte led him to a gully where she had hidden the horses, and when they returned to the city... They were married. The Khan gave Monke half of everything he owned and treated him as an equal in all things. And Monke treated Borte the same. And such was their reputation for courage and wisdom that their enemies stayed far away and they lived contentedly for the rest of their lives. Which is another way to say, my friends, happily ever after.